Big topic today. We love trying to educate our patients as to the foods they should be looking for and ingredients to avoid to help their microbiomes and their gut health. So this is a huge topic these days. What are these ingredients in our foods and what are they doing to our guts and our health in general? So our our, our third food to avoid um, ingredient that is again approved by the FDA um, is carrageenan. And when this one came out, um, it was probably about 15 years ago or so now, it was it's derived from red seaweeds. So if you, you know, if you've ever been walking at a beach and I live in New England, they're all over the place, these red seaweeds. Um, they're used very commonly um, in Ireland. And they're one of the ways they're used in Ireland is people gather these red kind of seaweed, Irish moss is one of them, and they cook down um, in their milk with the seaweed to make their base for pudding. So you can see right there that this carrageenan is a thickening agent. So it's kind of in the cell walls of these seaweeds and it thickens things. So sometimes seaweed has this, this um, slimy texture, right? So if you're a person who would not be really into, you know, Japanese food and eating a seaweed salad, that's a really different texture than what we're using carrageenan for in our foods. We're using it as an emulsifier. So to, to dissolve things, to thicken things and to sort of jellify things, but it doesn't give that kind of slimy seaweed texture. So I just want to make that distinction. So right there, it's seemingly a, a safe ingredient, right? It's just something from seaweed. It's traditionally been used. These are the things I kind of think about when I look at different ingredients. Um, but it turns out that concentrating and extracting this one thing and adding it in other foods to thicken it um, and stabilize it with a certain texture that's creamy is not a good idea for our gut flora. So it's really wreaking havoc um, and causing people inflammatory bowel disease. It's it's uh, become a, a big issue. And one of the one of the areas where it was most used, which is unfortunate, is in vegan foods. So then we have to think about you know, we're using this ingredient to thicken up the foods because we like creamy textures. So if you have a vegan salad dressing and you add something like this to it, it thickens it, it makes it creamy. And people really like that. And that makes a lot of sense to me. And what that's about is that fat, it makes our, it kind of like is soft in our mouths and moves around. And that to our bodies comes in as fat. And fat traditionally in our, you know, many thousands of years of trying to nourish, having a lot of fat would be good for us. And so we, we tend to crave ice cream, right? So if you think about that texture of the ice cream, it's that creamy texture. And I think part of it, and this has some research studies, is because we, we know that's going to be long sustaining calories and really good for us and fats. And one of the big shifts that Hillary and I do with people in their diets is to actually increase healthy fat intake. So, so one way that a vegan diet or, or a really healthy veggie based diet could do it without dairy products is to do something like avocado as your kind of creamy base or because that has really good fat in it and it gives that creamy texture to something. So it can be in a salad dressing, you throw an avocado in there in the blender and you get a thicker creamy dressing without adding dairy. Um, it also could be um, a nut butter. So you could do almond butter, or cashew butter, or walnut butter, peanut butter, if it's really clean peanut butter, um, whatever it is and that creamy texture um one of my favorite salad dressings is a cashew cream based uh salad dressing it's really spicy and delicious so that gives you a creamy texture and that's something people really like another thing you can do for that creamy texture is um tahini so a lemon tahini dressing or a tahini sauce on vegetables gives you that creamy texture you feel well nourished people like it so i i really do understand why we use this uh food additive but it's in a lot of different things so really looking at your sauces your salad dressings um, anything that had, you know, any prepared food and looking for that ingredient and avoiding it might be a good idea. And, and one thing that's really interesting to look at is that Irish moss has become a really popular dietary supplement. And, um, a few years ago, people were all coming in sort of asking me about it and, and, you know, seaweed is really good for us. Right. Um, but it is a source of this carrageenan and you can, you can harvest this carrageenan 
naturally, you just harvest all the red seaweeds and they extract it there, or they farm them. And more and more over the years, you see farming for this ingredient um, being done. So when we're farming for an ingredient, there's always that question of the environmental implications and what toxins might be accumulating in there. Um, so the natural source may be a, a better source, but it, it's an interesting thing because um, it's Irish moss has been touted as, you know, a thyroid support supplement, immune support, tons of antioxidants in there, and people are taking capsules and capsules of it. And could that be giving them GI problems? Potentially. So seaweed in traditional cultures that eat seaweed, you, you eat a small amount. It's not a huge serving at once. Um, and it, and it's over days, you know, it's not sort of like every day you have a huge um, seaweed salad. It's just not like that. It's usually a smaller portion and not necessarily every day. But these ingredients, as far as if it's in your uh, creamer you're using for your coffee every morning, then you're getting carrageenan every morning and your GI system's interacting with it. Um, the other concept is what if the whole seaweed form somehow protects against bothering your gut flora. And so the idea is that this ingredient causes inflammation and causes um, some of your, some dysbiosis actually. So, so whatever it's doing as far as shifting the bacteria that's growing there is not good as far as inflammation in, in people's bowels. So what would you notice? Probably bloating would be the first sign you would notice. This might not be agreeing with me. Um, and it can be from there, any of these inflammatory uh, GI symptoms. So it could be a lot of gas. It can end up with uh, acne, migraines, rashes, headaches, joint pain, all those things can be rooted in your gut. So just looking at these, these added ingredients and thinking, hmm, do I really need that? Or should I be having it every day? Those are the things I'm trying to um, think about. And I also think that we don't we don't probably eat seaweed enough in our diets, frankly. Um, and thinking about adding in like a really clean seaweed here and there and seeing what happens as far as does that bother your GI, I'm going to, I'm going to venture and you all can write in and let me know that you're not going to see any GI problem and that it's the super concentration of the one ingredient, the carrageenan, that is the problem. So that's your third uh, ingredient in your foods that might be bothering your gut system. And next time we have a really, really uh, common um, set of uh, ingredients that are all for um, decreasing sugar in our foods that can bother our GI system. So I will see you for the fourth the fourth edition of trying to get rid of these ingredients that are wreaking havoc on our GI systems. Bye, everybody.